Well, welcome to module three of Practical Preaching, where in this module, we're going to give you a sermon template outline that we often use here at New City Church that will help you and it helps us preach clearer and more effective sermons. Now, I'll let you know from the beginning, I used to be against templates and against outlines. I thought it was a way of dumbing things down and not really going deep and really explaining the text and the things that the way that they should be explained. And then I began to find that actually giving a template and giving an outline Not only does it speed up the sermon writing process a little bit because you already have kind of a skeleton outline every time you're beginning, but it also forces you to be more clear and more precise in what you're going to say. And so the template we're going to give you is the one that we use here again at New City Church that helps us preach clearer and better and more effective sermons, which I think is helpful just in general when it comes to preaching, but it's particularly if you are more inexperienced or haven't preached as much, I even think an outline or a template is even more valuable. So here is the template that we use. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through the template and just explain what it is. And then I'm going to give you an example of a recent sermon I've given here at New City Church to help explain and show you how this works. And so here's the template. First thing we do is we start with an intro and attention. We start with an intro and attention. We don't start with a welcome, right? We want to draw people in and we want to gauge them, engage them from the very beginning. And so we want to kind of set up attention to give them a reason to keep listening. And then what we want to do is we want to give them something from the very beginning to hang their hats on. And so we tell them, what do they need to know? You kind of, from the very beginning, tell them what they need to know. And then after telling them what they need to know, we then go go on and tell them why they need to know it. What do they need to know? And then why do they need to know it? Why is it important? Which then leads us to telling them, what do they need to do with what they've just learned? What do they need to do with what they've just been taught? So what do they need to do? which then leads us to why do they need to do it? And all of that culminates in a bottom line, again, which we talked about in module two, the bottom line, the clearest part of the message to kind of give them the take home, what they need to walk away with. And then for us, we've added another element to it, which is the gospel slash conclusion. We always want to make sure that we're presenting the gospel. And sometimes you can present the gospel throughout the message in different parts. But we definitely want to, at least by the end, make sure that we're not just telling people what things to do without showing them their need for Jesus and see how Jesus meets their need. So this is the template that we use. Again, intro and attention. What do they need to know? Why do they need to know it? What do they need to do? Why do they need to do it? The bottom line and how does the gospel speak to this text or the situation that we're talking about? Now, let me give you an example of what this looks like so you can really see and understand how this outline works. So recently, we went through a series called I Am, where we were looking at the seven I Am statements of Jesus. John chapter 11 is the sixth I Am statement of Jesus, where he says that he is the resurrection and the life. So John chapter 11 is the story of Jesus raising Lazarus from the grave. And so here is the here is kind of how the outline worked that I used. I began with this tension and this introduction. Have you ever felt lost, right? Have you ever felt lost or hopeless? I think the answer to that to all of us is yes, right? And so what do we do when we feel lost and we feel hopeless? That was the tension that we set up the message with. And then we began to read some of the text and began to say, here's what we need to know from the very beginning. What we needed to know is that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. So I read some of the text and then I said, here's what we need to know, that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. That's what they need to know. Then it's the next section. Why do they need to know it? Why do they need to know that Jesus is the resurrection and the life? Because without the resurrection, there is no life. Without the resurrection, there is no life. And I kind of would talk about what does that mean? What is the resurrection? And in this case, the resurrection is synonymous with Jesus. So that's why they need to know that Jesus is the resurrection and the life, because without him, there is no life. And if that's true, what do they need to do? We then said this for this message in John chapter 11, that they need to and we need to believe in the resurrection and the life. Again, if Jesus is the resurrection and the life and without him there is no life, then what do we need to do? We need to believe in the resurrection and the life. We talked about that, read a little bit more of John 11, which then led us to why do they need to do it? Why do they need to do what they're supposed to do, which in this case is believe in the resurrection and the life? For this text and for this message, it was because without Jesus, we are spiritually what Lazarus was physically. If you're familiar with the story, Lazarus was physically dead before Jesus resurrected him back to life. And so why do we need to believe in the resurrection and life? Because if we don't, without Jesus, we are spiritually, we are spiritually dead, just like Lazarus was physically dead. That is why they need to do the what, which is believe in Jesus. And then this was the bottom line for the message this Sunday, that Sunday. And it was this, that whoever finds Jesus finds life. 
that was ultimately what everything was pointing towards, that whoever finds Jesus finds life. And then we concluded by talking about the Gospels, things like Jesus is the resurrection and the life, because of the resurrection of his life, kind of talked about how the Gospel speaks into this. And then we concluded with the bottom line again. And here's why this template is so helpful. It's helpful for a number of reasons. One, when you have a template that works, it allows you to be, it forces you to be more selective with what you're going to say. Because the reality situation is, and if you're like me as a preacher, you can, you can tend to say too much and teach too much and try to cram everything into a sermon. And then when you actually sit back and realize, you know that not everybody can remember everything that you're going to say. And so having an outline like the one we're sharing in this module is it makes you focus on what is the most important thing for me to say and for me to get across. While, yes, it is helpful for us to explain everything that's going on in the text. Again, we don't want to overwhelm people. We don't want to bore people. And we want to effectively communicate the gospel so that people can learn and apply what you're trying to say. And so one of the benefits of this template and templates in general, especially if you have a good one, is that it forces you to focus in on what you're trying to say. Another big benefit of this template is that it causes you to have a structure and a flow to your message, right? What do they need to know? Why do they need to know it? What do they need to do? Why do they need to do it? What's the bottom line? And here's what's helpful about that. We've all been there. We've all written messages and given messages. We're like, man, that wasn't that great. The cool thing is, ever since we started to move to this, this structure and this outline, is that even the sermons that kind of fall flat, that aren't exactly what you wanted them to be, they're still better if they have a flow to them than if they're just not any good at all. Like I actually found, once I started using this outline, that even the messages that were not as good, maybe I didn't do a good job with it, maybe for whatever reason it just uh, I had a hard time studying and putting it together that week, was that it was still better than if I hadn't had an outline at all because at least the message still flowed. And there's nothing worse than having a lot of great content and teaching a great text, but not, but not bringing things together and not seeing how it all fits together. And the cool, the cool thing about this template as well is that, it, again, it can work in a topical setting or in a more exegetical verse-by-verse -verse setting. Like in this situation that I gave you, we read John 11 from verse 1 through verse 44. So we actually read a lot of text that week, and we broke it down into the different sections. And so you can use it, you know, when you're going verse by verse, but you can also use it when you're going topically. It works for both sections. And if, again, if you're like me, you give often, your, your tendency is to teach too much, and your tendency is to give too much information. And using an outline allows you to focus more on the content than what you're supposed to do. So that is the sermon template that we recommend here at Practical Preaching. Again, it allows you to focus better. It allows you to be more clear. It allows you to have a direction. And it also allows you, just practically speaking, when you're sitting in front of that blank page every week thinking, what direction am I supposed to go with this message? Where am I supposed to start? To already know that you have a sections to fill in and a direction to go really helps you when you're kind of staring there and you're not even sure how to begin.